<clears throat> Hi, I'm LP Master 6, and welcome to Let's Play Super Mario All-Stars, my 57th Let's Play on this channel. This was released by Nintendo in 1993, in case you couldn't tell by the copyright information presented at the bottom of the screen. This is also for the SNES, in case you had no idea, but if you had no idea, I'm kind of surprised you're watching this video. So if you're watching this video and you're not a big Mario fan, because you're obviously not a big Mario fan if you don't know anything about this game, right? I think so, at least. Like, but then why would you be watching my obscure videos? That just means you're a fan of me. And in that sense, I'm flattered, but why would you be a fan of me if you're not already a fan of this? But I'm going to over-explain things like I normally do anyway. So, uh... This is known as uh, Super Mario Collection in Japan. It is a compilation of remakes of the first four Super Mario games. The ones for the NES, made from the ground up for the SNES. New and improved, and it really bothers me that there's no brothers here. It says Super Mario. You got Super and Mario, but no brothers, and you got these awkward gaps here between... Mario and the two and the three. But most importantly, you have Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels coming outside of Japan for the very first time, which is revolutionary! And I'm thrilled about it. Actually, Miyamoto uh, said his main motivation for making this compilation was so that international players could play this game without bitching about how hard it was. Because, you know, that's why America said, no, we do not want to. But anyway, we're going to get right into it here. Um, and I guess I can show you that there's different... It's kind of a primitive form of button mapping. It's kind of like Star Fox's uh, different control scheme types. So with Type A, that's the way I like to play. Run with Y, jump with B, but you can do it with X and A. Or you can be a lunatic barbarian maniac, and you can have three run buttons and one jump button. I assume this is for the type of person who refuses to use X and Y unless they have to because they grew up with the NES and just want to use these buttons because they're called B and A. But uh, that's actually objectively wrong. Everybody knows that. Uh, I wish more people would conform to the way I want them to do things, even though it doesn't affect me at all. And uh, that's how conservatives view gay marriage. So, neat fact, very dangerous mentality to have. You learned your lesson from my... Um, tale of ironic, sarcastic humor. <laughs> so yeah, in case you haven't noticed, which you better have, the graphics are oh gorgeous and amazing. We're gonna hop right into it here. And the music, did you hear that harmonica for the title screen? There wasn't even a title screen song before in the original. But here we are, the age of the future. Oh, and it wouldn't be a classic LP Master 6 video without me singing along. And instead of the dreary underground music, we get bonus room music to differentiate this from the underground levels, which are dangerous. This is not dangerous, that was a bonus room. Uh, one thing I can't say, oh, I love the parallax scrolling. The backgrounds are the best part about this game. Oh my god. Like, I didn't notice them so much as a kid. As you know, you're desensitized to that stuff. This is, this was really my first exposure <laughs> to games, was Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. I know in my Super Mario World videos, where I also say the N-word, I say that Mario World is the first game I ever played. It was actually the version of Super Mario All-Stars called Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World, which I will be playing separately on this channel later. When I say I'm playing through every single Mario game, I mean it. I'm thorough. In case you've never seen me before, I'm LP Master 6, and I'm playing through every single game in release order relevant to every series that is relevant to the original Super Smash Brothers. Thus far, including the... Yeah, the Mario series, the Donkey Kong series, the The Legend of Zelda series, the Metroid series, the Yoshi series, the Kirby series, the Star Fox series, the Earthbound series, and the F-Zero series. More coming soon. Oh, that is always a mouthful. I am 100%ing this game, which means I'm 100%ing all four games and doing multiplayer for the games that allow it, i.e. 1 and 3. Neither version of 2 has multiplayer. Oh my god, my ear is so itchy. Oh. Man, 
Oh, what I was gonna say about the graphics is, I can see where people would be uncomfortable with these graphics. Oh, not the backgrounds though, look at that. The waterfall in the background, just, oh, I love this so much. It's gonna make me cry. <laughs> um, but like, you look at these sprites and you think none of this is the definitive version of that character or that enemy like that's not the definitive sprite of a Goomba when you think of a Goomba you don't think about that nearly like you're more likely to think of the goofy looking Mario World sprites even for Mario Mario looks goofy in that game but I still think of that before I think of this and it's weird design choices like I think in an earlier build of the game they were gonna have Mario have his normal red shirt and blue overalls but they swapped it later I don't know why but I think it's really important and really cool, uh, some of the stuff they did. They brought the games up to Mario World standards, right? But they still tried to make everything feel like it was from its original game. Of course, 1 and the Lost Levels don't look that much like their original counterparts because Black Box NES games, uh, well, they look okay because of, you know, nostalgia and 8-bit retro feels, you know? Oh, it wouldn't be a Mario playthrough if I didn't hit these blocks. Cause... <gasps> no! Oh, I took a hit in 1-4. you got to be kidding me. Oh, that is so disappointing. But hey, there's Bowser boss battle music. Say that three times fast. It's not that hard. I mean it. Mm. I've earned a drink of water. My wife thinks it's so cringy when I say I'm drinking my water while I do my videos. <laughs> I can see why, because of the way I say it. But that's a staple of LP Master 6. You can't just not go, oh, I'm gonna take a drink of my water. Mm. Ah, you can't just not do that. I wouldn't be me if I didn't. <laughs> uh, but I think the music, you know, it's not the iconic originals, obviously. It can't be, it's not 8-bit. Uh, a lot of remixes today are either too heavy and don't sound anything like the original, they just sound like remixes, or they keep that 8-bit undertone that doesn't really set them apart. I think this is the definitive soundtrack for Mario 1. You know, obviously you still listen to the original because it's the Mario soundtrack, but this I think is better. Like for instance, uh, sound design wise, not having the invincibility theme grating in your ears over and over in a coin heaven room like that. Also, those clouds even looked beautiful. This game is so great. Well, smart design choice, but the music overall I think just sounds better. You know, it's like how they envisioned it originally, or by they I mean Koji Kondo, since he was the only sound guy I think for the original. But still, ooh, that just, mmm. Like this. Look at the water graphic and listen to the water music. And while you do that, I'm going to take a swig of my own. Ah. Mm. That's Aquafina water for you right there. Uh, normally I buy great value, but when they're out, I'll buy Aquafina. When they're out of Aquafina, I will buy Dasani. And now you know my water hierarchy. If they don't have those three, don't buy water at all. Great value is not the best tasting, but it is the cheapest. I stopped drinking Dasani because I found out it's really acidic and bad for your teeth. No, well, not compared to like soda, but I only drink water, so... I don't know. My teeth are in bad shape anyway. I guess I gotta be nice to them somewhere. I eat, I eat like a package of Oreos a day, but as long as I don't drink soda, I'm good, right? Still scared about getting kidney stones. That's for another time. I've given that rant before. This is a new fresh LP Master 6 right here. Uh, yep, now that I've got new equipment and I'm all professional, I'm gonna start... Uh, I'm gonna start asking for subscriptions. I'm gonna do custom thumb. Actually, I'm gonna do custom thumbnails. My wife said she's gonna do them eventually. Maybe. If not, I'll eventually be forced to do them myself. Only the only reason I need them is because people just don't click on videos. Or not. I mean, YouTube doesn't show them videos to click on unless there's no other search results. So I gotta get back to having thumbnails. 
because, you know, my videos aren't for everybody. I have a very weird uh, sense of <laughs> interest and in what's good. But, you know, as long as people give it a chance, it's all right. It's all good. But I do have a new Elgato. Oh, hold on. I got to point this out now. The desert background for the cheap, cheap bridge levels. Now, if you've seen my old videos, you know how much I love the cheap, cheap bridge levels. Oh, they are some of the best ever. Because they're just, they're bullshit. <laughs> and it's great, but they're not too much of like, like, um, what's the word? They're not unfair. They give you more power-ups than you normally get too, to make, to balance it, so it's nice. But I love those Goomba totem poles in the background, and with the desert theming is cool for a background, but why would you pick the fish levels? Like, the land fish levels. Why are they in the desert? Is it an oasis? I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not gonna pretend to get it. Uh, but I was gonna also say I consider this to be the definitive version of Super Mario Bros. 1, and that is a tall statement right there. So many people, I feel like, are blinded by the nostalgia of the original, but this has improved physics, graphics, sound, everything you could want. And I know that Super Mario Bros. Deluxe exists, and it's good, it's fine, it's just, like, even All Might Nippon kept the, uh, for those who don't know, that's a retooling of Super Mario Bros. using the Lost Levels graphics and engine, the improved engine used in the Lost Levels, but with Mario 1 levels. Even that used the Lost Levels stuff. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe takes out Lost Levels stuff, even though it includes the Lost Levels in it. And so it's not really improved, and the screen crunch is pretty bad, but the bonus content is really interesting. And it's got a world map, and it, it's overall pretty cool. It's a good game. It's just... Uh, I feel like this is better. It might not have as much content, but I feel like it's the best way to play this game. Now, obviously, we'll get to Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on this channel one day. This is the... Depending on how you look at it, um, I've played through Super Mario Bros. in full four times on this channel before this one. Uh, in different compilation cartridges and the original, I did 100%, 100% in hard mode. Then I did a casual, minimalistic run, and then I did the same in hard mode. And I'm doing this. I also did the Lost Levels, which is essentially a ROM hack <laughs> of one. So you could count that one if you wanted, because All Night Nippon is a retool with the Lost Levels. So that's, what, seven now we're up to? Uh, but it also made an appearance in Nintendo World Championships 1990, briefly. I technically played it there. Uh, so that's... That's what, eight appearances of this game on my channel? I'm pretty sure there's more. I counted ten earlier. But I can't remember. Uh, so, I guess I could talk about the development of the game. Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to do this, like I said. Mostly to promote the Lost Levels, that was his basis for the reason, but he also thought it would be cool to bring these over to the new system. And he was right, I love remakes. People these days get sick of ports and remakes. I like, I like them in any capacity. Just an enhanced version of something you already had a... I swear, when it was good in the first place and they make it better, that's great. When it was mediocre in the first place and they make it great, that's even better. Or when they completely change it up, when they just improve upon it, but... I was going to say, I think it's really important, like, that they improved it to up to Mario World standards, but left things the same. Not only so that the, uh, the physics engine and the level design, because if you made it the Mario World physics, the level design just wouldn't work. They'd have to retool everything, and at that point it'd be too much for a remake when you want to stay faithful to, at the time, the best-selling game of all time which was Super Mario Brothers, in case that isn't obvious. They even went as far as to be faithful to the original games to keep the Goombas their original sprite colors. Originally, like underground, they were blue because of uh, palette limitations. Now they're blue because they want to stay faithful. And so at this point, it's not just about the... Like, we've had artsy games before, like Link's Awakening has a lot of artsiness to it, which... Uh, 
I mean, it's not like, it's kind of like a trippy, like, hallucinogen, hallucinogen fan's favorite movie. Like uh, the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, that Johnny Depp movie. You know, it's not tr traditional. Mm. Sorry, I was talking while holding my water instead of playing the game. It's not traditional character development or storytelling, but that's still really, that's cool. You don't have traditional movie-like stories yet. Uh, just basic fantasy-esque stuff. And they had Earthbound Beginnings, and that's the only RPG I've done on the channel. But there were other RPGs, and those clearly have stories, and all of that, I think, is obviously art. But this, when you want to make an active effort to preserve the original, I think this is where video gaming establishes itself as a permanent medium. And in a weird way from this, an art form. Especially, look at these backgrounds, oh my god. In the music, I, I'm sorry, I can't get enough of that. But in the original, you didn't see the damn bushes move like that, and it's beautiful. But it's so nice to see them. I love when they remake 8-bit uh, games and 64-bit games. Those are the best remakes, in my opinion. But, yeah, with as many releases as Mario 1 has had, I think this is the best. Uh... I was going to talk about my new equipment. So the, uh... I bought a new capture card, the Elgato Game Capture HD 60S. And that is so that... The only difference, basically, that I've noticed is that it's USB 3.0, so you plug it into a blue port, and voila, no, no lag. I can use plug headphones into my computer and listen to it from the preview of the recording so I don't have to turn the TV up so you guys have to hear an echo. And also I get to hear the game music now, which is great. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, but I encountered a lot of problems. I bought a headset, the headset I'm wearing right now. Oh, what am I doing? I'm not taking the warp zone. And like, uh, my mic wouldn't work for some reason, to the point that the su whoa, oops. The support team for the headset told me to send the headset back, but they thought I had another warranty, but no, I bought that shit used on eBay. And I told the seller and asked him for a return, and he approved it, but then when I went to, uh, look at it to return it, the cats had opened the box somehow and dragged the mic out and chewed it up. But honestly, I was considering keeping it anyway, just for the good headphone quality, because I don't own a single decent pair of headphones. These are nice, except since it's noise-canceling headphones, I have to keep one off of my head to hear myself talk, or I'll talk like this the whole time, and that's not good. Well, I encountered problem after problem with everything to the game capture software, which finally stumped me, and I thought I was gonna have to give up, and I laid in my floor for three hours, defeated, all depressed, because, you know, I haven't been doing anything artistic with my life, I haven't done anything with my college degree, I'm a DoorDash and waiter driver, I don't really do much of anything, and this is, uh, this is like kind of a, a living memoir of my hobby, and also kind of like a journal. When I look back on my old videos, I'm like, I totally forgot how I acted at this time or that this little anecdote happened. So it's like a vlog that cements my proof of my uh, tackling my lifetime goal of completing every Nintendo game. So I like doing this, even though it's not the creativity of writing. Oh, this is the best addition to the game. You hear that little sound? That means you got the maze right. If you hear a, uh, that means you got the maze wrong. But I don't think we'll have that problem because I, you know, I have these mazes memorized finally. Because I've been playing this game for, um... I, I've, been, I've played this, this, even this version of this game several times. The All the way through Super Mario All-Stars, I'll pull out my Switch if I don't have any Switch games I'm actively playing, and I'll be like, ah, sure, I'll play through Super Mario All-Stars in, in its entirety right now. I mean... Oh, 
I've been taking a lot of hits because I'm talking, but I haven't died yet. I've gotten pretty good at Mario. I mean, not to pat myself on the back, but I, you did see me beat the lost levels and... Oh, I was gonna say, you know, this, this hobby isn't the same as... You know, I've been saying I'm gonna write a book, but it's not the same as that. It's not the same as writing a song. This is obviously not... I mean, you could say it's an art form. I'm not gonna argue with you. There's no point in, you know, saying, oh, this is an art, like fucking Roger Egbert or Egbert or whatever the hell his name is. That guy you kept arguing till the day he died about how video games weren't art. That's so stupid. Like, why, why does it matter? Like, you know, I'm thinking, I am gonna write a book. When I found out, or like, my friend Galen... Uh, keeps telling me, like, when I tell him my dreams, he's like, you should write a book. <laughs> and plus, the way I think, the way I talk, and the way I act are really weird. <laughs> so, I, I think I'd be good at writing a book. But I don't know if I want to write something serious, because I feel like I started writing something, a journal, kind of an autobiography sort of thing. Just, I didn't intend to publish it. Actually, I did uh, intend to publish publish it after I died. <laughs> That was my goal. And I had this, I decided to do this weird experimental writing style of telling different stories back and forth that still connected thematically. Like my dog dying and like modern troubles with friendships and whatnot. And then it just, uh, you know, it was interesting. And that was right before I read Slaughterhouse Five, like the day before. And then I found out it, he did, Kurt Vonnegut does the exact same thing. Really good writer. I don't know why I didn't read him earlier. That type of weird writing. But it's not that interesting to talk about books forever. I did a million takes of this all day. And before this, for the past like five days, I've done different tests to try to make this work. And the things I've talked about are just ridiculous. So if I talk without monitoring what I'm saying, like, I went on this rant about how I went dolphin riding with my best friend, Gabriel Iglesias, and here he is, folks. Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. That was a joke I had when I tried to record something with my friend Drew the other day. Because he did this accent that sounded just, uh, just like Gabriel Iglesias, who I'm not a big fan of, by the way. Like, he's a stand-up comic that just tells, like, average stories, but he has these stupid sound effects. Uh, I mean, he's not the worst. Uh, I don't know, it's it's this weird effect I've noticed where if you're listening to a stand-up comic at home, you're not going to laugh nearly as much as if you're sitting there. When you're sitting there face-to-face -face and you spent your money on a ticket, you're more likely to laugh. It's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of to play uh, against your insecurities, actually, psychologically, because if you... It's like buying a movie ticket. When you're in the movie theater, you're gonna like it better than if you pirate a movie at home. Because you spent your money on it and you'll just depress yourself otherwise. I can't remember the name of that, but there's a name for that phenomenon. For those who don't know, I have a degree in psychology, a bachelor's of arts. Bachelor of arts, not bachelor's. Gotta be technical. Oh, how long have we been going? Um, I'll pretend to cut it here. <laughs> I'm not actually going to split the video file, but I'll do that thing where, you know how YouTubers these days just have to have outros for whatever reason? I don't get that. Like back in the day when you could only have 11 minute videos, it was okay to just the video stop and then start again without an intro and an outro. I, I don't get that. But... Next time on Super Mario All-Stars, we are going to wrap up Super Mario Bros. 1 single player. I'll catch you next time. I'm LP Master 6.